Thank you. Uh, so we're going to talk about improving uh, Python and Spark performance and interoperability using Apache Arrow. So hi, everyone. Very excited to be here today. My name is Li Jing. I'm a software engineer working for um, Two Sigma Investment. Two Sigma Investment is a technology company that applies uh, No. So uh, let let me introduce you, and, yeah. and by the time they figure it out. So and uh, yeah, I guess and um, and I'm Julian. I'm an architect at Dremio. And um, I formerly I worked at Twitter, where I co-created Parquet. And I'm an Apache member, and I'm on several PMCs, including Apache Arrow, which is our topic today. Hi, so to give you a quick agenda, I'm going to start. I'm going to talk about the current state and limitation of PySparks UDF. Then I'm going to give you an overview on Arrow, how the project started, and what it's for. And then uh, Lee is going to talk about the improvement realized um, in PySpark using Arrow and the future roadmap of things yet to come. So first, uh, the reason for PySpark is um, that there are a lot of things that are much easier to express using Python than the built-in uh, Spark features. And for example, uh, you can do in weighted means, correlation, um, <clears throat> moving average, a lot of things that are much easier expressed in Python. And so the way a PySpark UDF uh, works is by using, so you express uh, your Spark pipeline using Python, and you can use Python Lambda expressions inside of it, and they're going to be run in, into the, inside the Python runtime while Spark runs on the JVM. And there are two main types of expression. You can have simple, take one value in, evaluate an expression like x plus 1. You can do uh, more complex, taking multiple columns in and do data expressions. And you can also do group UDFs, uh, group-based UDF, where um, you work on a list of values. And that's the more interesting case we're looking at today. So the raw UDF, it's similar to what you do in Spark with a, a map operator and passing a, a function. And uh, in this example, uh, DF with column, uh, this is a da uh, PySpark data frame. We're creating a new column, V2. And uh, we create it by applying the UDF defined as this lambda expression, x equals x plus 1, uh, to the column V1. And the big downside of this, it's like it's 68 times slower than doing the same thing in Scala and for a bunch of overhead we're going to talk about. A group UDF. Um, well, it's similar to a raw UDF, except you want to do it on a list of values. So it's similar to do a group by followed by a map operator uh, in Scala. And you could use it, for example, to compute the weight in mean by months. Right? You group by months, and then you apply a function that will do the weight in means. And the, the problem is it's not supported out of the box. So there's a lot of boilerplate to pack unpacked values into lists. And there's a lot of overhead uh, to that. And that um, translates into poor performance um, because those groups have to be materialized when possibly you want to do uh, partial aggregation and then combine them. Um, and there's a lot of serialization, deserialization involved in converting the data structures that Spark understands into the data structures that Python understands. So we're going to look at an example of data normalization. So here. You take a list of values, you subtract the mean uh, to each value, and you divide by the standard deviation. So to apply this simple mass math operation, you need to write all that. And I'm not going to go into the details, but if we zoom in on the useful bits, you can see we do a group by months, and then we define a function called normalize, which is you recognize the expression you were defining earlier. And then we apply it. Uh, into this last line, we apply the normalize function and create a new column for it. And everything else is boilerplate code to make the group UDF work into the raw oriented API. 
And so, yeah, it, it has poor performance, so we compared it to a baseline. So this group by ag collect list is the Scala uh, baseline in Spark to materialize those lists. And so uh, evaluating the normalization on top should be a small cost when here we pay 60 times the cost because there's a lot of serialization, deserialization happening. So the problem is there's a lot of packing and packing of nested rows. There's inefficient data movement because serialization, data ser deserialization, and Lee is going to show you in details what that looks like. And the scalar computation model at the overhead of uh, boxing and the interpreter. So that's where I'm going to give you an introduction about Arrow to give you some background of why Arrow can help in this situation. So first, uh, Arrow um, started as a common need for uh, in-memory columnar representation. So a lot of those open source uh, SQL on Hadoop, like uh, Impala or Drill or Presto or um, other projects, you know, like Kudu is a columnar storage, they're all looking at um, the literature and uh, academia like Monet DB and vectorize execution and that's the next step on making all those things much, much faster. And it's all happening in all those projects. But the idea here, hey, if we can agree on what this columnar in-memory representation looks like, then there's a lot of benefits in removing all the overhead of converting from one representation to the other, from one system to the other. So building on the success of Parquet, we put all those people together in a room and we say, hey, let's, let's agree on what it's going to look like and start an Apache project, define the format, and share. Uh, first, you can share the implementation. And second, you have the benefit are now it's standard. So there's a lot of work that doesn't need to happen because um, we don't need to convert from one format to another. So the goal of the project is to have a well-documented uh, cross-language compatible uh, in-memory representation. So you can use it from Java to C++ and seamlessly um, communicate from one process to another uh, through it. It's designed to take advantage of modern CPUs, pipelining, uh, cache locality, et cetera, and it's embeddable and interoperable. So before, you know, so here we, I have sample of execution engine, our processing framework on the top, and more storage layer on the bottom. Um, you have the cost, like if you, we look at the case of Spark and Python, there's a lot of overhead on making them communicate because you have one is a native process in Python and Spark running on the JVM. And so most of the time, you find the lowest common denominator for communicating between the two, and you have a lot of overhead of just serializing, deserializing stuff. And second, there's a lot of duplicate effort because you need to figure out how to integrate each of those, and you need to find this common layer for each of those things every time. So there's lots of duplication, lots of complexity, and lots of work involved. Now, agreeing on the in-memory representation, well, once everyone agreed on that and used Arrow for communication, then integrating between any two of those is much, much simpler. There's a lot of effort that's uh, not necessary anymore. And the non-negligible advantage is there's zero cost in serialization, deserialization, because it's exactly the same representation on, the others, on both sides. Arrow is designed so that you can copy the buffer directly from memory to the wire and back to memory without any operation. Uh, so there's no CPU cost involved, and we reduce the uh, serialization cost to zero. So to give you a quick example of what it looks like, uh, we have some JSON data here to have some data. And to simplify, and didn't show the bit sets that are used to capture nulls. So if you have a null, you would have a bit that says 0 versus 1 if it's defined. Uh, if it's a fixed width uh, types like integers, you can see the edge column. We could just put 4 bytes after 4 bytes after 4 bytes. It's fixed width. It's one vector. It fits variable widths like the name here. You have the values all one after the, uh, the other in one vector. And then you have an offset vectors, which points to each beginning of value. 
And this offset vector mechanism is composable. So if you have a list of variable length values like phones, then you have an offset vector that represents the beginning of each value, and then you have another offset vector that points to the beginning of each list. Right? So you can have arbitrarily nested uh, data structure represented in that way, uh, and you have this nice uh, columnar representation. So now, when you set it over the wire, you have just a simple data header that says, hey, here are the buffers, and here is their size. And then you just copy those vectors directly uh, to the wire. You noticed because the offset vector is all relative, right? You have index 0, index 5, and so on. There's no translation necessary. There's no absolute pointers like you would have if you had an object tree in memory in regular languages. So you can just copy them uh, directly to the wire and back, and there's no CPU transformation involved. You don't consume uh, CPU transforming or recalculating those pointers. So this representation is designed to maximize CPU throughput. One thing is modern processors don't execute one operation after the other. They stagger, they start the next instruction before the previous one is finished. And for that, they have branch prediction algorithm to kind of, every time there's an if, or there's a data-dependent branch, they need to try to start executing the next instruction now before they know which one is the next one, so they pick one and they guess, um, so that it can go faster. Otherwise, it would lose a lot of cycles waiting for the previous instruction to be finished. So vectorized execution is like actually focusing on very tight loops on one column at a time. I'm sorry, I don't have time to go in the details, but vectorized execution is taking advantage of pipelining to get maximum throughput of the CPU. SIMD instruction are single instruction, multiple data. Similar, it's about telling the processor, hey, do the same operation on four values at a time. And because we put all the values next to each other, it's really easy to do that. We are going to work on that whole vector at a time. And cache locality is, again, the processor goes much faster than it can fetch data from the main memory. So to avoid this problem, it copies, it has some limited cache on the processor itself that goes much faster. But every time it needs to fetch more data into it, it has to wait for this. And so this creates a lot of latency. And in vectorized execution, because you focus on one column or a few columns at a time, you actually have to fetch more data a lot, fewer, a lot less. And uh, it's much more efficient. And scatter gather IO is this mechanism as just pointing the network layer at the memory and say, take those buffers, send them to the network, or take those buffers, put them back in memory. And you take advantage of the most efficient copying of data that doesn't require any CPU involved for transformation. So we have some numbers. Thanks to Wes McKinney from uh, Two Sigma, we put a bunch of blog posts with some uh, measurement of um, PySpark, Arrow, Parquet integration, uh, and give some numbers. So uh, the slides are available. You'd be able to go look at it. Some information about uh, our releases. So since we started, uh, in green, you have the number of uh, commits or JIRA tickets resolved. In blue, you have the number of days. So we've been trying to make more often releases and try to release every month now. Um, and so you can see there's a lot of activity that has been happening. And now I'm going to invite Lee uh, to talk about the improvement to PySpark using Arrow, and uh, probably you can introduce yourself again. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Lee Jing. I'm a software engineer working at Two Sigma Investment. Uh, Two Sigma is a technology company that applies data science to the fields of finance and insurance. Uh, I'm currently building a Python-based analytics platform using PySpark. So here's some work we have done to improve um, PySpark using Arrow. So first, I want to just quickly illustrate how um, PySpark UDF currently works. On the graph here, we have two processes. On the left side, there's the executive process running in the JVM. On the right side, is the Python worker process running in the Python runtime. During a UDF evaluation, the, ex the executive here will stream rows in batches to the Python worker. And upon receiving these rows, the Python worker simply invokes the UDF on a row-by-row -row basis and sends the results back. So this is a quite simple um, architecture and works currently. However, as Julian mentioned earlier, there are two issues with, the, uh, with this approach. The first is we're doing a lot of serialization and deserialization in Python, which is not very efficient. And also, 
the way we compute the, uh, the way we invoke the UDF, basically in a scalar computation model in a Python for loop, is not very efficient either. So this slide, I want to uh, deep dive into one profile we took during one UDF evaluation to show a little bit of the, where the overhead is. The first thing I want to show here is it took about a total of um, two seconds to compute about two, um, two million doubles for x, x plus one. Here on the profile, it shows four seconds. This is because of uh, the profile of Python actually adds significant overhead. So just keep in mind, the actual runtime is, uh, is about two seconds. And to translate that to throughput, that's about eight megabytes per second in processing this simple computation, which, is, uh, which isn't very fast. The second thing I want to highlight here is the second red box here, which accounts for over 90% of the total runtime of this computation. And these are all uh, spent in the serialization and the lambda function overhead. So this is quite, um, not, uh, this is quite less than ideal, and we want to improve this. So here are some changes we made to PySpark to vectorize the row UDF. Basically, what we, have, what we have done is we implemented a module to turn Spark rows back and forth to arrow, back, uh, arrow batch records. And we send arrow ba um, batch records across the wire to the Python worker. And upon receiving those, uh, those data, now the Python worker uses a UDF function, which is now a transform on pandas data frame to enable vectorized operations. So I want to just go on a quick talk about why do we pick Panels data frame as the interface if you're not um, already, if it's not uh, already obvious. Uh, first, Panels data frame is a fast, feature-rich library and widely used by Python users. The Panels data frame already exists in PySpark by using a two Panels function. And um, Panels data frame is compatible with the uh, most popular Python libraries such as NumPy, Stats Model, and et cetera. And last but not least, Pandas supports um, zero copy to and from the arrow data structure, which is very important for performance reasons here. So now I want to show a comparison uh, with the scalar version of the UDF and the vectorized version of the UDF. The first thing I want to show here is the total runtime goes to about two seconds down to less than 100 milliseconds. That's a over 20x speed up on the Python worker. The second thing I want to show here is all the overhead we've seen before, so the over 90% of the time spent in serialization and lambda functions are all gone now. You, don't, you cannot find them anymore in the vectorized version. And finally, I want to show that uh, even the I.O. part is faster in the vectorized version because of the, because of the I.O. is now also vectorized, so which, uh, which means less system call and results in faster I.O. With all that, we also measure the end-to-end -end runtime comparing the default version, which is the row-based, and the arrow version, which is um, ve vectorized. Here, again, we're doing x plus 1 for a data frame of doubles, and we're doing this just on a single thread in Spark local mode. And as you can see, we can achieve a pretty consistent of 4.5x uh, speedup across uh, different data sizes. The speed up isn't quite 20x as, we, uh, I, uh, as, as is shown earlier in the Python worker because there's extra um, time spent in converting Spark rows to and from arrow batches, which brings, a, which brings the speed up down to about 4.5x. But still, this is quite um, promising. The next thing I want to talk about is supporting group UDF. As, as, as Julian showed earlier, in order to, to, uh, to do a transformation on group in Python, uh, in PySpark right now, it's quite complicated. So we want to make it better. First, I want to talk about just quickly about this common pattern in data analyzing called split, apply, combine. This is a simple yet powerful um, pattern which basically breaks down a problem into smaller pieces, operate on each pieces independently, and finally put all the pieces back together. This is a common pattern supported in a lot of language, uh, a lot of the systems such as SQL, Spark, Pandas, R, etc. So in PySpark, split, apply, combine basically works like this. So Py, uh, Spark or PySpark provides a lot of functions uh, for you to split your data differently 
in, for instance, you can call group by, or you can use the window function to um, put your data into, into different groups. The apply step, basically, you can, do, uh, you can invoke any of the building Spark functions, window functions, or you can do a Scala UDF. Here are just some quick examples. You can do a main standard deviation, or you can collect the data into a list and process it later. And the combined step is done inherently by Spark. So what, what we want to do is we want to keep the split and combine step unchanged, and we want to add support for the group UDF for the apply step. To do that, we introduced a new function, uh, apply on the group by function. This function takes a UDF that, uh, on the pandas data frame, so it's a, transform, it's a transform on the pandas data frame. It treats each group as a pandas data frame, applies the UDF on each group, and finally assembles the data back in, in Spark. Here, just a quick illustration of how it works. On the left side, we have um, three partitions with different rows. First, we do a group by, which is a sh uh, full shuffle of the data into different groups. And then, within each, group, uh, within each partition, we invoke uh, this lambda function on, the pan uh, on each group um, by using pandas data frame as, as its interface. And finally, we get the data back together in, in, in Spark. To show how to use this, we go back to uh, the previous example of data normalization. Again, we want to subtract it a list of values by its main and divide it by its standard deviation. So this is a comparison of the two implementation using the current API and using the group uh, UDF API uh, we, we implemented. On the left side, this is what you, uh, what you can do now, which is uh, the exactly same code as Julian showed earlier. So which involves a collector list, a uh, row UDF, and explode. So it's a quite complicated uh, computation. And on the right side is what you can do with the group UDF, which is pretty simple, uh, easy to read and write. And also, we are able to achieve a, a 5x speedup by using the group uh, UDF, because it's using arrow as a serialization and using pandas for the vectorized computation. Finally, I want to talk about some, li lim some limitations we found along the way. Um, first, the limitation is this approaches require um, conversions between Spark rows um, to arrow record batches. This is because inherently, Spark is a row-based memory layout, so it's an iterator of rows. And, and um, the arrow data structure is inherently column-based. And in order to convert these two, we need to spend some extra CPU cycles to copy the data from one format to the other. Hopefully, this can be improved once uh, we, can, we can have access to the column format within the Spark internal. The second, uh, the second limitations we found is in the group by case, it's actually pretty hard to do local aggregation. If you still remember earlier, uh, in, the, in the illustration earlier, we have to shuffle the data first and then apply the function, uh, apply the UDF function on it. This is difficult due to how PySpark inherently works. Um, if you're interested in details, a, there's this Jira discussing um, aggregation functions in PySpark, so you can take a look afterwards. So that covers all we have done, um, bas basically, to show some improvement. And next, I want to talk about a little bit uh, about future roadmaps. So on, first, on the Arrow side, um, we expect to implement Arrow RPC over REST, which is a standard way to retrieve and store data in Arrow format. Secondly, we want to implement Arrow IPC, which stands for Interprocess Communication. This is basically a shared data structure to, to allow even faster data transfers, um, trans, transfers between languages, because you can just pass the memory pointer from one language, one language to the other, because of Arrow data structure is language agnostic, both languages can understand it perfectly. So th this, is, this is actually pretty novel um, work that's happening. Also, uh, there's, there has been discussions about Arrow integration with more systems that we, we would like to see, for instance, Drill and Kudu. And on the PySpark side, we're going to keep working on this Jira, which captures a faster UDF using Pandas and Arrow. We want to support the pandas UDF function with more, more PySpark functions, for instance, group by aggregation and window functions. Here is the API prototype of how things might look like. This is not final, but just to give you a taste. The first example here I'm showing, uh, you can do a group by aggregation with the, uh, with the pandas UDF. In the, in the UDF, 
you define how you want to compute the weight and mean for each group, which is using NumPy average function. And you, you should be able to just use this with the, the pi spot group by aggregation function. The second example I, sh uh, I, I want to show here is um, you can implement a customer rank function using uh, the NumPy rank function. And you can use it with the, the window function API call, uh, by calling the rank UDF over window. So this is something uh, this, ha this hasn't been implemented yet, but we're, we're working on finalizing the API and actually implement this work in the near future. So with that, I want to, um, as a community, I, I would like, we want to help to make PySpark better. So if this work seems interesting to you, um, please uh, get involved, watch this Jira, or you can t uh, give me some feedbacks, talk to us, discuss about your use cases. I'm very, uh, we are, we are very excited to hear about that. Also, if, uh, if you're interested in Arrow project, here's some uh, information you can use to watch this, uh, watch this project. It has been pretty active, uh, as Julian showed earlier. So with that, I, uh, we want to thank a couple of, a couple of people here, Brian Cutler from IBM for, and Wes McKinney from Two Sigma Investments for helping build this feature. Also, we want to thank Apache Arrow community, Spark Summit organizers, and Two Sigma and Dremio for supporting this work. With that, um, I want to move to questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lee and Julian, <laughs> for the great work in the community and Apache Aero. Uh, we've got about uh, four minutes. If you have any questions, we have one mic over there, and the other mic is with me, so I'll try to run around and, and add some steps to my Fitbit. So go ahead. Hey, guys. Uh, great presentation. Quick question. Uh, are you using all this efficiency? Is this for trading for like less than a second? Are you holding these assets for a very short amount of time? Or is this more for value investing and doing a whole bunch of research and then using that information to purchase for the long term? Um, this isn't particularly for low latency. This is just for uh, interactive use cases. Any other question? Go ahead. I was wondering um, if uh, is there a roadmap for um, doing more uh, like any kind of column co compression, that kind of stuff in Arrow? Thanks. Julian, you want to answer that? Is there any what? Sorry. Um, it, it's, it, on the roadmap, is, is there um, w what kind of support for uh, the, you know like columnar compression where you have an Arrow? Uh, what kind of support do you have for columnar compression? Column compression. So currently, there's support for a dictionary encoding. Uh, and then the main uh, support for columnar compression there is in Arrow. Uh, the accent is on everything that is very CPU efficient. So dictionary encoding is something that's great because it helps with, if you're doing aggregation, you can go much faster on the dictionary IDs rather than uh, variable length values, for example. Uh, we don't have more advanced um, compression or complex compression uh, techniques yet or in the near future, and one of the goals was to agree on a limited set of features. If you make too, put too many features, it slows down adoption. Uh, but dictionary encoding is a big one. We got time for one more, last. Going one, going twice. All right, give a big hand to Jillian and Lee. Thank you.